Hi, this is Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that spotlights the stars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So sit back, relax, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. Well, for my podcast today, my wife Leslie is a huge Prince fan, and when we started prepping for this particular interview, I decided to tease her a little bit by playing some Prince music and some music from my guest today, and she says that he sounded as good as Prince, if not better than Prince. <laughs> He's touring the country, fronting the incredible Purple Experience, the greatest tribute to Prince in the world. I will talk about him embodying Prince and also his incredible solo work. Will you please welcome from Minnesota, Marshall Charloff. Good morning. Good morning, Rick. That was quite an introduction. Well, I have to tell you this. My wife, Leslie, huge fan. I played some stuff for her from you and also from Prince. And I said, can you tell the difference between Prince and 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 Marshall Charloff? And she goes, "Boy, he's he's spot on. This guy's got chops." <laughs> right. Well, and, you can't you can't say I'm better because that's blasphemy. Yeah, uh, well, why? That's that might be true. That might be true. But as far as uh, she <laughs> says, that, she says that this guy's the real deal. And if anyone who is contemplating getting tickets to see the Purple Experience and you're not, you're on the fence, go. This guy is is absolutely incredible. Uh, since hearing your work. Uh, my wife is very, very uh, psyched about seeing you. You're coming to Laporte on the uh, 8th of October. Fans who've bought a ticket to, to the gig, what are they going to see? Well, there's going to be a lot of energy. Um, you know, visually, you're going to get the costuming. You're going to get the imagery and whatnot. But you're going to get, you know, the highest level of uh, musicality and execution of the spirit of Prince. And that's basically what I try and do is just channel his energy. Right. And then the rest of it is, is my own musicianship and the incredible uh, players that, that back me up in the project. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you were in a band with his first cousin. Is that how you started your relationship with Prince? That is, that is how I started that. Um, yeah. We were just kind of one of those um, garage band situations when we were teenagers. And, um, you know, everybody was rumored that I, that Frank, the drummer in the band was Prince's cousin. <laughs> but, you know, this is in the 80s when Prince was the biggest star in the world. And and if you're in Minnesota and, at that time, the buzz was around. Was, oh, I know Prince's mechanic. I know Prince's hygienist, you know. And <laughs> and, and so when, when you heard, we, we were just so desensitized to it at that time. So when it's like, oh, he's Prince's cousin. Yeah, sure he is. That's cool, whatever. Like, I didn't think anything of it. Until he uh, said, hey, we're going to go hang with Prince at, at rehearsal. Uh-huh. It's already been cleared, and he, he's expecting us, and it was just the two of us. And, and, know, and, and, during, the, and during that first interview, he asked you a point-blank question. That, would you share that with, the, with, uh, with our listeners today? Because it, <laughs> it's something that kind of floored me the first time I actually heard you talking about it. It's, it was wow. just a point-blank question. You did your homework on me. I'm, I, I'm impressed. Well, the, that, credit the wife on this one here. <laughs> okay. I, I, well, that's always a good move. <laughs> Let's credit the wife. Yeah, the first thing he asked me is, do you lie? Do you lie? Do you lie? And, yeah. and the way you responded, obviously, uh, got his ears perked and said, okay, this guy's legit. Yeah, well, it was, you know, how do you answer that question? Yeah, right? and, and, <laughs> try not to, and, right? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If you say yeah, yes, yes, I do. Well, now you're being truthful because we all do. But by being, tr- you know, then you're risking him saying, "Well, I don't, I don't deal with liars." So you know, right. get, get out of my face. <laughs> so, but it was it was an odd question. But I mean, if you, if you looked at, you know, the parade album years later, just a, I think it was maybe a year or two later, and then there's a song on there called "Do You Lie." Ah. I'm assuming. And I don't, I can't verify this, but I'm assuming they were recording that song because they recorded all that stuff. This is before Paisley Park was constructed. Right, so this yeah. was at the warehouse and, and all that stuff was being recorded there. So I'm assuming they recorded Do You Lie or were, or were we at least rehearsing it mm-hmm. the moment I stepped up. And that's why he asked me that. Cool. That is really a cool story. Right now in Chicago, I don't know if you know about this, but right now in Chicago, there is the Prince Immersive Experience. Have you seen it? No. Oh, you've got to check it out. I live it. (laughs) (laughs) I was wondering if you showed up there, how people would say, wait a minute, who is this guy? He looks just like Prince. Is he Prince? Uh, Well, first of all, I mean, in my 
personal life outside mm-hmm. of the you know, purple experience, you know, I, I'm not mistaken for, well, clearly not, not oh, these well. days, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'd have to get in the whole get up and, and whatnot for right. anybody to, to go there. So you'd have to go incognito if you went there, but it's going on. They've extended it now through the first of the year. So the next time you're in Chicago, uh, I know we're on, my wife and I are on vacation in a couple of weeks here, and that is one of the things that's first on her list is to see the, mm. the Purple Experience. Uh, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the Prince Experience is going on. Uh, the Prince Immersive Experience is going on in Chicagoland through the first of the year. So uh, that's something you might want to check out here. What I'm going to do is, uh, since since we're talking about the Purple Experience, we're going to give you a little sample of his Purple Experience. Here is our, our guest today, Marshall Charloff, playing or singing Kiss.
Wonderful rendition of Kiss done by today's guest on the Somebody You Should Know podcast, Marshall Charloff. Okay, that's the first part of our interview. Let's talk about you, the solo artist. You obviously wear uh, several hats, or in this case, berets. (laughs) (laughs) Are you self-taught, or did you have formal lessons, or how did you actually get into experience music yourself? Um, Yeah, I'm self-taught. But I mean that that to say I'm self-taught means that I did it myself. That, that <laughs> nobody ever showed me anything. That I didn't read books. That I didn't go out. You know, and and certainly I just absorbed everything I could and still do on a daily basis. Everything mm-hmm. that I can study uh, daily and just um, I'm a student for life. And anybody worth their salt as a musician is a student for life. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I didn't do any formal training, anything like that. All right. So no formal lessons, but it, do you do you play by ear? Mm, that's another um, open ended. <laughs> um, so the way I approach music and I would think most musicians do is um, you immerse yourself in 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 theory. You learn how the greats before you did it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there, I would consider that somewhat of a roadmap. So, you know, knowing the Nashville number system, for example, knowing your modes in music All right. and uh, knowing the math behind uh, how music's constructed, is that using your ear fully? No, no, because th- that, that's like if I'm going to drive across country, I got to get from Minnesota to, to L.A. Am I going to use my instinct, which would be my ear, or am I also going to have a map? And the answer is I'm probably going to have both in right. order for me to get there. Absolutely, so, absolutely. That, one so. song, uh, you, one of your most recent albums is, is just absolutely floors us, and it's called Unperfect, not Imperfect, but it's called Unperfect, and it is an right. incredible release, because uh, my wife uh, heard this for the very first time, and I think she's played it like a dozen times uh, so far <laughs> on our yeah. stereo this morning. Uh, Hypnotic is the name of it. It charted for six consecutive months on the Global Smooth Jazz Charts, and also contributed to Unperfect being named in the top 100 albums of 2020. That is a major accomplishment, man. It is. I'm extremely proud of that. And I love how you pointed out that it's unperfect, not imperfect, right? which makes it an unperfect title, <laughs> um, or imperfect, I guess. Um, yeah, Hypnotic is... Um, that that's probably my my favorite song. It's it's what I wake up to. It's what gets my day started, which is weird to listen to your own music, but there's just something about that one. Uh, so I appreciate that your wife favors it as well. And it's one of my favorites too. And I think our listeners are going to favor it also. Here is Hypnotic from today's somewhat you should know podcast guest Marshall Charlotte.
Hypnotic from the album Unperfect from Marshall Charloff, today's guest on Someone You Should Know. Marshall, you play all your instruments, right? I do. Wow. Every instrument uh, on those tracks. When you started, how old were you when you played your first instrument? Was it maybe piano or was it drums? What was it? Uh, it was guitar and it was a little bit later. Um, I think I was 15 maybe. Mm-hmm. Four, 14 or 15. Um, just talent show at in junior high and i remember seeing the um band up there and all the girls screaming and thinking ah, i probably <laughs> should do that because whatever else i'm doing isn't working <laughs> all right very cool very cool yeah. the next song uh, i want to feature is another one that my wife is absolutely nuts over what's the story behind what if what if um hmm. i just think that nothing's as it seems you know, and I think that's becoming more and more the case as uh, we're getting divided on everything. And I think nobody's right because I think the world's just a mystery mm. and nothing's as it seems. So I just that was the I guess the seed. And usually the song writes itself after you just kind of have the seed that sprouts and you put a little water on it. And, and it says, what if we're wrong? And all the people are just getting old and wasting their time and losing their mind. It's got a great video to go along with it, too. As a matter of fact. For anyone who's uh, listening today, if you go to the show notes, we'll include all the links to all of his videos and everything we've talked about and the merch and such. But the video is all over Minneapolis. It's all of uh, Prince's haunts, isn't it, pretty much? And maybe some of your haunts as well, right? Yeah, the, yeah there's definitely um, a lot of kind of signature spots in Minneapolis that you might have seen in, in the Purple Rain movie, downtown, First Avenue, that kind of thing. But yeah, like you say, that's that's just hometown. All right. I want everyone to check this thing out. You're going to really love this. This is What If from Marshall Charloff, today's guest on Someone You Should Know.
Great song right there from Marshall Charloff. That is What If. Man, I really like that one. You're uh, listening to him right here on the Somebody You Should Know podcast today. Marshall, what a, a little feature we love to do is called Tales from the Road. And this is all about getting to and from a gig, something that happened on stage at a gig, uh, your accommodations at, you know, at, the, at the, the place that you're at. Can you give us maybe your Tales from the Road, something that's a little uh, unusual? Well, everything we do is a little unusual. I mean, the, <laughs> the band started, um, I don't know if you are if you were aware of this, but the, the band was founded in uh, 2011 by Dr. Fink, uh, which is Prince's Princess, original yeah. mm-hmm. keyboard player. And um, he's a character. Um, and you can imagine that's kind of what put us on the map in the first place, meaning we didn't have to pay any dues like most bands mm-hmm. have to kind of establish ourselves. We were on a na- national band from day one because we had Dr. Fink in the, in the project. And early on in the project, it was really early on, one of the first few shows, um, he had to take a separate flight. Oh, really? Yeah. He, uh, he had a funeral that he had to attend. So he had to fly day of show, which is impossible to do nowadays the way uh, things are going but mm-hmm. he he did that and his flight didn't show up and so uh, we have a packed sold out house um and there was a lot of media there we were there was a new manager that we were um, working with that flew in for the show and we're just waiting and waiting and waiting and he's at the airport and he's in he's in a uh, an uber getting there and the, the promoter just said you, you got to do something just go play so I just went out there by myself, got on the piano, and just did a bunch of sing-alongs with the audience. And I killed about 40 minutes by myself. And that's Uh-oh. what kind of got me, got that <laughs> seed planted for maybe I could do my own show, which ended up happening later. Uh-huh. But um, so I did about 40 minutes. Then we started with the band. I did about another half hour um, with no keys. So we just tried to do songs that we that weren't keyboard heavy, which is <laughs> right. very very hard to do in right. Prince music. Absolutely. And then he walked in, and then the crowd went absolutely crazy. And then we did about another hour and a half with full band with Matt on the oh, keys. That's that's awesome. That is really awesome. <laughs> Good story right there. Good story right there. People who would like to buy your material, buy your CDs, buy your shirts, your merch. Uh, good website. Yeah, I mean, uh, amazing domain name, which is, when you hear this, you can be like, how did you get that? PrinceTribute.com. PrinceTribute.com. All right. Very cool. And that'll redirect you to Purple Experience. Um, if you wanted to go just explore um, my original stuff, you can still get that from Prince Tribute. But MarshallCharloff.com is a separate entity, which is a deeper dive into just you know who I am individually and, and as an artist. Very good. We'll include those in the show notes there. We'll put links down there. That way you just click and you'll get uh, nice. Marshall's music. You'll also get a chance to find out exactly where they're touring. They're going to be in LaPorte, Indiana, coming up here in a couple of days. We're looking forward to seeing you. As a matter of fact, I'm bringing my niece. She huge, huge, huge Prince fan. So my wife and, uh, and, and her will be screaming like crazy that night. Uh, I'm I'm going as a chaperone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to keep okay. check. But uh, they're looking forward to uh, to the show. Going to wrap up the show with Minneapolis Sound, obviously from Minneapolis. Uh, tell us a little bit about this last song. Well, it, I, I wanted to just kind of pay homage to to Prince, but also everybody else in Minneapolis that are part of that thing called the Minneapolis Sound. So I I just tried to name as many of the artists that I could that. Most of them are friends of mine, or at least influences of mine, and it's subtle. Uh, so that's one of those, if you watch the video on YouTube for uh, Minneapolis Sound, I highlight when I've named one of the artists or influences. Um, but if you just listen a few times, you'll, you'll catch most of them. All right, very good. Minneapolis Sound from today's guest, Marshall Charloff. Man, it's been a treat to have you on the show. I'm looking forward to seeing you in a couple of days, bud. Likewise, Rick. Thank you. This was good. Thank you.
of a doctor Cause it's about to get sick I don't need no other medicine But a snare drum and a kick It's gonna get funky I won't sit on my head those keys I slap them bass in the funk guitar I'm in the apple of the suit if you play Don't you know Hi, this is Rick Anthony thanking you again for listening to this episode of Someone You Should Know. Now, if you're an aspiring musician or an established musician that's looking for a little exposure, I invite you to drop us a line at someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. That's someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. Also, I invite you to tell a friend about the Someone You Should Know podcast. I thank you for tuning in this time and I invite you to check us out next time on the Someone You Should Know podcast, because you never know who's going to show up. Until next time, remember, God loves you, and so do I.